been revealed. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was, he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, and upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. 
We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken from the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 22 responsively by half verse as marked by the asterisk. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so far, my God, I will cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. Yet you are the Holy One. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They cried out to you and were delivered. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. Many young bulls encircle me. They open wide their jaws at me. I was poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My mouth is dried out like a pot shirt. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They stare and gloat over me. Be not far away, O Lord. Save me from the sword. Save me from the lion's mouth. I will declare your name to my brethren. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand 
for he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. For kingship belongs to the Lord. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. The Passion Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. 
Judas who betrayed him was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, Jesus asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have wrongly, if I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? Peter denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. 
It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone from for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourself, yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, 
We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not a friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judgment bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed over to them, him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus. And carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which is Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him. And Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots to see who will get it. This was to fulfill the scripture that says, 
they divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of the Passover, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified to you that you may also believe. This testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, because of his fear of the Jews, came to Pilate and asked to have the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who gave him permission and removed his body, Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, came also, bringing a mixture of myrrh and alloys, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in, with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb, which no one had been ever lain. And so, because it was the day, the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.
John 12, 27, 28a, Jesus said, Now my soul is troubled, and what would I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And so, Father, we come to you in this dark hour to remember what your only son, Jesus of Nazareth, did for us. Move our hearts through the darkness into the light of your salvation. Through your wisdom, bring us hope in our redemption through your son. Amen. I thought it would be good to step back to the statement made in chapter 12. This is the moment when Jesus of Nazareth, teacher, master, and Messiah first states, the time has come. And so we too have come toward the end of our Lenten journey to join our Lord in his great suffering for us. This Good Friday, our reading brings us to the Gospel of John, and there is much to be said in John. But before we go there, I think it is important that we sit for a moment in the truth of what Jesus endured for us. When we combine the stories together, we find that the Roman soldiers made a crown of long, sharp thorns, and they were pressed deep into his skull. They gave Jesus not, not 10, but 39 lashes from a whip known as a flagrum that most likely had round metal weights at the end of each of three separate strips of leather. That's over 100 whippings. These would tear at his back, his sides, and chest causing severe internal bleeding, the collapsing of lungs with fluid starting to build. Jesus most likely experienced tremors, seizures, and fainting fits, wanting to scream and drop to every lash. And yet we're told that like the sheep before the shearer, he remained muted. They then mocked him by placing a purple robe on that freshly torn body while calling him the king of the Jews and taking turns, hitting him over that crown of thorns, pressed into his skull with a wooden reed meant to represent a king's royal scepter. And if that were not bad enough, they made him carry his own cross on that torn back to the place known as Golgotha where he would be stripped down before having nails hammered into him so that he could be hung by a cross like the worst of criminals for literally all the world to see. And he did all of that for you and for me. As we read through the Gospel of John, we do understand that these horrid acts of violence upon our Lord and Savior were committed as well. But the author of the Gospel of John chooses instead to shift our attention to another part of the narrative. In some ways, he shares the very thing that our seminarian joy chose to teach on for Lent. The author is sharing the importance of the word forgiveness. The author speaks to not one but two betrayals, the first by Judas against our Lord with a kiss, and the second by Simon Peter with his three denials of knowing his teacher. The author also speaks of a secret disciple, Joseph of Arimathea, who up till that point had been too afraid of the Jews to openly follow Jesus, but who would courageously approach Pilate for our Lord's body to be prepared in the night with the help of another secret follower, Nicodemus, so that it could be placed in a nearby empty tomb. And although we can only speculate for Judas Iscariot, we can clearly relate to these other acts, which surely were reasons to carry guilt, 
shame, self-resentment, even fear. But on that night, 2,000 years ago, Jesus took up each and every one of those crosses and many more and bore them all for us. And it's because of those heavy burdens that we sit here this evening, from birth into death, his whole life journey, every teaching, every miracle, every follower, every persecution was done to show us a better way to live and to offer us a key into his Father's heavenly kingdom, not as slaves or servants, but as children of God. He had all the power at his command to prevent what he endured, and yet he placed his trust in his Father's plan and willingly chose to lean into the suffering. He would not waver. As Jesus spoke those final words, it is finished. He spoke not of his own life or the fact that he would no longer have to suffer. No. John chose, chooses these words as, as to say, God's work is now complete. It is perfect. Every reason for which Jesus came to be was done. A new law had been laid down. His voice had gone out beyond the children of Israel to all lands and people. A new covenant had been made. We need no longer be shackled by our sins. Now, go back to that moment of silence where we started. Think about what Jesus endured for you and for me. Pilate did not know it, but it was no coincidence that he had placed that sign on that cross over the head of Jesus, and he hung there as he hung there off to the side of a major road, a trade route, leading into the city of Jerusalem. It was no coincidence that the sign was written in Latin, Greek, and Aramaic for all the world to see and read. Here is the King of the Jews. Here is the Savior of the world. Let it be declared for all to hear. Amen.
father sent his son into the world <clears throat> not to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved that all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with him of everlasting life <clears throat> we pray therefore for people everywhere according to to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity in witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers, and for the people whom they serve, for our Bishop Michael Curry and of all people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, for those about to be baptized, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, 
by whose spirit the whole body of the faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church <coughs> that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth and for those in authority among them. For Joseph Biden, the President of the United States. For the Congress and the Supreme Court. For the members and representatives of the United Nations. For all who serve the common good. That by God's help, they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or mind, for the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the wounded, and the crippled, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair. For the sorrowful and bereaved. <clears throat> For prisoners and captives and those in mortal danger. For that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to you that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. Give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ for those who have never heard the word of salvation, for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them <clears throat> to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth, and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you 
as you have revealed, as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to our God and pray for the grace of a holy life, that with all who have despaired this world, departed this world, and have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of the resurrection. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred ministry. By the <clears throat> effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We glory in your cross, O Lord, together, and, and praise, praise and glorify your Lord, for by virtue of your cross, joy, joy has come, come to the whole world. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your, Let your ways be known, known on earth, earth, on earth your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise and glorify you in the resurrection. For by virtue of your cross, joy has come to the whole world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. We adore you and bless, and bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. O Savior of the world, who by thy cross and precious blood hast redeemed us. Save us and help us, 
We humbly beseech thee, O Lord. The Confession of Sin is found on page 360. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and to forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Those who wish to receive communion may come forward at this time.
tremble, tremble. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. <clears throat> give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the <clears throat> dead, to your holy church, peace and concord and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>